It's no coincidence that you're watching this video right now. God has some truths He wants to reveal to you. And through watching and receiving and hearing His voice, He will transform every part of your life. So <clears throat> turn with me to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And this is a real simple message, but a real necessary one. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to read from 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And um, from verse, I'm going to read from verse um, 20. <clears throat> In fact, let's start from verse 19. You all know what, that, that I was going to back up one verse. So, Hello. Namely, verse 19, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not counting their wrongdoings against them, And he has committed to us the, wo the word of reconciliation. Now let me explain what this is meaning. When The day that you met Christ, not only was your sins washed away, but you were declared righteous. In other words, you were declared just and in right standing with God. Okay? And... Many people don't, there's two sides to righteousness. The one side is the gift of righteousness that you've received the day you received Christ. But I want to just add to that a little bit. You know that most Christians don't even know that they've been declared righteous by the blood of Christ. In our bookshop, we sell a book by E.W. Kenyon, Two Kinds of Righteousness. The best book ever written of any book ever written, two kinds of righteousness, I would say maybe the blood covenant I would put there right up with it, but two kinds of righteousness is probably the most important book you can ever read as a Christian, as a born again Christian. If every Christian on this planet would read that book and take it to heart, not, not to, to glorify the book, but to glorify certain truths, basic truths in the Bible that people don't get. <clears throat> but righteousness has two aspects to it. The one is God's declaration of righteousness over you the day that you became born again. And then there is righteous living. Comment down below what God just revealed to you. Share this video with somebody that is in need to hear it as God is sharing with you. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and follow us. So this, you understand what I'm saying? Now, Righteous living doesn't nullify the gift of righteousness. You got to receive the gift of righteousness in order to be able to live righteous. You follow what I'm saying? But you can live a good life and think that makes you righteous and it doesn't. Because nothing can wash, wash you clean, set you free, declare you righteous and just before God, the throne of God, other than the blood of Christ. So nothing can do that for you. The only thing that's going to do that for you is the blood of Jesus. And I get it, you know. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16 says, We can now go, go boldly to the throne of grace to receive help or to receive grace in the time of need. So we, you know, even if you've had a mistake or made a mistake or stumbled here or there, you can still go to the throne of grace and say, Hey, Father, I'm sorry. Would you please forgive me and help me? And we can get through this junk and you set me free from it. You understand what I'm saying? But the thing about righteous living is that righteous living is not just God once declared you righteous. It now means that you actually have taken hold of that gift of righteousness. And you realize, well, I ain't the same person anymore. In fact, if you back up a, little, a few verses from where we just read, that's 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Just two verses back. That is the verse that says, Behold, all things, old things, O-L-D, have passed away. And all things, A-double-L, -L, everything, in other words, have become new. That's the new creation right before that it speaks about water baptism. In other words, what is he saying? He's saying you're a new man. So you can't say, you can't say that I'm living a righteous life if you're still living the old man. 
Amen? Because that's still the same context. It's the same chapter. You follow what I'm saying? Does that mean that God has not declared you righteous? No, he's, he's declared you righteous. He's word over you that you're 100% righteous and 100% pure. I'm just going to take my friend Bob here for a second because he won't get offended if I use him for an example to try and explain something. Okay, so let's just say he messed up. Okay? He had an anger fit. <clears throat> now, he didn't. I'm, I'm just speaking this as if... You know, you, you guys don't really know what happens with pastors in, you know, behind the scenes. But I just use him as an example because if you use somebody else, they might be offended. So let's say we had an anger fit and ran, anger fit and ran into the back of the church. Does that, declare, does that take away God's righteousness from him? No. But that doesn't mean he was living righteously. Do you follow what I'm saying? So I might have taken a hold of it. Them two ladies might have taken a hold of it. And some of the people in the church might have taken a hold of it. And they, they look different. You know, we got people in the church that's been drinking for many years. And they're free from alcohol just by sitting in the services. And they had an encounter with the Almighty. And so everything's changed for them. They're a new creation. But I know many people that got born again, baptized and spirit-filled. But they're living for hell. Am I saying that should be that way? No, no. It should not be that way. So is God's declaration over them any different? No. But that doesn't mean they're living righteously. You understand what I'm saying? Now, I'm just explaining this as a basis of going somewhere. Because when God looks at him, the moment that he says, I'm sorry, you know what happens? God's like, I don't know what you're talking about. I've already forgotten it. I'm not saying he doesn't need to ask forgiveness. Because he's the one whose conscience would be struggling, and so his conscience need to be set right with God. You understand what I'm saying? He needs a fresh touch of the grace of God. You follow what I mean? So, and he, need, he, needs, he needs forgiveness. He, need, he needs to receive that forgiveness. And confession will lead you to that if, if you're struggling with something. So just going around doing whatever you want doesn't mean that you're living righteously. But God's declaration over him is the same. But here's the thing that comes in that I was going to speak about. Sometimes... We as more mature Christians and sometimes even preachers, whether you be in the fivefold ministry, you know, or if you're just some kind of random evangelist or a worship pastor or a worship minister or you're some kind of youth pastor, whatever kind of minister you are, maybe you've got a home church, whatever it is. You know, the, the more you get into ministry, the more you realize ain't nobody perfect. Ain't nobody perfect.